that's going on and and then another thing I want to a mess. I mean, it just shows our divided country and the hate that's in our country in a lot of ways. And this car piled into a group of protesters on purpose from everything that we hear. And I don't want to get into politics of what's going on because to me that doesn't matter. What matters is that there is a spiritual sickness going on. But one person was killed, I think, that's all I've heard. And then many others were injured and hurt. And so there are people in pain today because of what happened yesterday. Well, you know, sometimes we look at the obvious pain and, and on the one side there, but we don't always see the other pain that's out there. Sometimes we see people who are in pain because of nothing that they did, but then the people who caused their own pain, we don't necessarily pay attention to, or we maybe think that they deserve it. But here's the thing, it's still pain. In the family of the man who did this, think about the pain they're going through now. You know, there's all kinds of things that are going to happen they, to deal with the, the, the guilt, the shame of what their son, their brother, whatever did. And also the possibility of not seeing him for a long, long time. And some people say, well, that's just the way it is. Well, and that's true. But it's still pain to them. So we see pain all around us. And so when we see people hurting, what can we do? That's the question as, as Christians. What can we do? Where do we start when we see somebody in pain? So today that's what I want to do is try to remind you of what you probably already know. What I'm going to say today isn't anything earth shattering. You're not going to learn anything probably new. All right? But just sometimes we just need to be reminded of what we're supposed to be doing and what is important. Now, that's the key. This, this, what we're going to talk about today is the key to everything that we do. Okay? It's the key to everything we do. So we're going to start with 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I hope you got your Bibles and will look with me at this. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Now, anybody know 1 Corinthians 13 is known as what chapter? The love chapter. So let's see what it says here. It says, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that could move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Without love, we are a clanging symbol. We are nothing. We gain nothing. Now, we usually apply this passage to loving other people, right? The idea of loving one another. Without love, you know, we, if we don't love other people, then we are a clanging symbol or we are, a, we, gain, we are nothing or we gain nothing. But I want us to maybe look at this a little bit differently, perhaps. And I would say that unless we love God, these same things are true. Let me reread this just a little bit and just kind of, now this is, I'm not trying to add anything to Scripture, but see if this isn't true, all right? I'm going to reread it just a little bit. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not love God, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging symbol. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not love God, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not love God, I gain nothing. Now doesn't that make sense too? I mean, if we don't love God, we can do all kinds of good things for God, but not really accomplish anything. You know, I like the analogy of a clanging symbol. I brought a symbol today. Okay? Did you notice? Okay. Right. Now, one thing I might just say to you, this is total sidebar, but do you know that we can praise God by striking a symbol? 
It says in Psalm 150, it says, Praise him with the loud crashing and resounding cymbals. All right? I don't know if you knew that or not, but that's what it said. So anyhow, so I'm going to praise God here in just a moment. Uh, <laughs> now, it won't, it, this is going to be kind of loud, all right? But not too loud because I didn't bring a real drumstick. I just got this little dowel rod, so it's not too bad. But I want you to listen to this cymbal for a moment. And I want you to think, what do you hear, all right? What do you hear when I strike this cymbal, all right? You notice anything about striking that symbol? It keeps ringing. It keeps ringing, but what happens to it? It fades away. It fades away. Okay? And here's my thought. If we try to do things for God without really loving God, we're playing symbol. Yeah, it starts out loud, and then it just fades away. And I've seen people do that. They start... Some ministry for God, and they get real excited about it, and they start off really good, but then after a while, they just kind of get tired of it. And they just kind of, it fades away. It just burns out. I think the problem is because we're doing it for all the wrong reasons. When we try to do good things for the wrong reason, it is easy to get burned out. Because we're doing it all on our own but when we do it out of love for God, we receive strength to keep going. Look what it says in John 15, verses 5 and 6. It says this, I am the vine, and you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. Now, you kind of get the idea of what he's saying here. He's saying if we really want to remain strong, if we want to remain um, steadfast, if we want to keep growing, then we have to stay attached to the vine. That means we need to be in a good relationship with God, with Christ. And if we're not, if we're not attached to him, if we are not connected to him, then we're off the side. Guess what happens? That branch dies. And it's only good to be thrown away. And that's what I think happens to so many of us. We, we are so busy doing stuff that we forget our first love. And so my question for you today is this. Do you love God? Do you love God? And here, here's my guess. My guess is that almost all of us are going to say, yes, I love God. So my next question is this. How do you know? How do you know that you love God? What things are evident in your life that demonstrate that you love God? You see, there should be something that shows that. In any relationship we have, especially if we are in a, in a relationship with, you know, uh, somebody who we really like, you know, they have a dating relationship or more importantly, a marriage relationship. Guess what? We've got to show that we love them. I sometimes counsel couples who are having marital problems. And it's usually because one of them feels like the other one isn't showing them enough attention. <coughs> they're not communicating with them. They're not really showing anything. They're more interested in things, other things. So my question is, how do you know that you love God? You know, some of us might say, well, I do all kinds of good things for him. Well, let's see what Jesus said to the church of Ephesus. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 2, he says this, I know your works, your toil, and your patient endurance. Okay, but notice what he says to him. He says, I know what you're doing. He says, you're doing good things. I know you're working hard. You know, you're toiling away. You're being, you just keep going. But then look what he says in verse 4. He says, but I have this against you. You have abandoned the love you had at Wow. All right. Here's a church that is doing well. I mean, they're doing lots of good things. But somewhere along the way, they've kind of forgotten why they're doing it. And they're doing it because it's what they've always done. Because it's what they think they're supposed to do. But they're not doing it because they really love God. 
Not because they love Jesus anymore. They lost that love for Him. And as we know, we've noted, you know, it takes time spending together to build a relationship. And that's how we develop a true love for Christ. By spending time with Him. And so that's what I'm going to remind you of today. That if we want to really help others, the first thing we have to do is to make sure that our relationship with God is there. That we love God. And so how do we make sure that we are in a good relationship with Him, that we are loving Him? The first thing is we need to read His letters to us. We need to read His letters to us. In other words, to be in His Word. And I think that means two things. One, individually. We need to be every day reading God's Word. Now, I know there's a lot of programs out there where you read through the, the Bible in a year, and that's good. But the problem with that is this, that it's very, very easy to get behind, you know? And, you, you know, you're, you start off at the beginning of the year, and I'm going to read all these passages, and there's a lot to read every day. And so you read through it as fast as you can because you want to get on to something else. And then the next day, you know, three or four days down the road, all of a sudden you, you miss a day. So you try to catch up. And then you go down a little bit farther, and then all of a sudden you miss a couple of days, and you're trying to catch up. And all of a sudden, you're so far behind, you think, I might as well quit. Okay. Now I'm saying if you can do that, do it. I mean, it's good to read through God's Word and to know all of it. But I also think it's important for us to meditate on God's Word. And that means to take a small portion of God's Word and read it and reread it and think about it all day long. In Psalm 119, verse 97, it says this. It says, How I love your teachings. I think about them all day long. When's the last time you've thought about God's teachings all day long? How long has it been since you've read a passage of Scripture and then all day long you're just thinking about it? The psalmist says, How I love your teachings. Do we love his teachings? No, these are, the Bible is God's letter to us. And I know I've told you this before, you know, Karen and I, when we were dating in the summers, we were, she was in Louisville, I was in bad work. And so we didn't see each other. So the only way, this is back in the day before cell phones, kids, <laughs> right? And before texting. And so you had to call long distance, which seemed to cost a lot of money. And so we only talked to each other maybe a couple times a month, maybe. You know, long distance. Because my mom and dad made me pay for it. So, you know, I was... <laughs> How dare they? But anyhow. But we, so we wrote letters to each other. And you know what? I still have those letters. I still have a lot of her letters that she sent me. And I don't know if she knows this or not, but every once in a while, I'll pull a couple of them out and read them. Just remember that she used to really like me. <laughs> 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 no, but, but still, if it does, it does my heart good to kind of read those letters and, and to know that she has always loved me, really. And, um, you know, that's what God tells us here, that He loves us. And it's a big love letter telling us how much He loves us. And that brings us to my second point. And that is this. We need to remember how much God loves us. We need to read his letters to us because that reminds us then of how much he loves us. This morning we came around the Lord's table. We took the bread and we took the cup and we ate it and we drank it. And I hope you realize that is an honor. It's a privilege. Sometimes I think we, we do have a tendency sometimes to get a little, you know, commonplace with it. We need to make sure each of us needs to make sure we're doing it, realizing how much of an honor it is to do that. To remember what Christ did for us, that He loves us. And so each day, Sunday, when we come together, this, this is why we do it every Sunday, is to remember why we're here. Because God loves us enough to give His Son for us. That He died so that I could have a relationship with God. That's how much God loves me. And how can I then not love him back when he's given so much 
for me. But we need to not do it just once a week. We need to remember every day that he loves me. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says this. But God shows his great love for us in this way. Christ died for us while we were still sinners. See that God shows his great love for us in this way. Christ died for us while we were still sinners. Now, let's make that just a little bit more personal. Okay? I'm going to say it this way. God showed his great love for Ron in this way. Christ died for Ron while Ron was still a sinner. You know what? If I just said that, I didn't realize this. If I just said it, just chills would be on my spine. All right? And I didn't know that was going to happen. But I want you to say the same thing. I want us all to say that. And put your name in there, all right? When it says us, put your name in there. All right? So let's all say it together. But God, God showed, showed his, his great, great love for, for Ron Karen in this, this way. way. Christ, Christ died, died for Ron while Ron Karen was still, still a sinner. sinner. Wow. That's how much God loves us. That's how much he cares about us. And we need to remember that every single day. I'd encourage you to memorize that verse. And every morning, when you look in the mirror, say that verse. And know that God loves you today. He loves you. His son died for you. So you could have life eternal. So you could have a life full and abundant. That's what he did. So remember how much He loves you. And then if we really want to love God, we need to talk to Him. You know, I talked about counseling couples. One of the main difficulties, it, it boils down to basically they don't talk. They don't communicate. And when you don't talk, it is easy to drift apart when you're not involved in each other's life. And by talk, I don't mean just talk about the weather. Or talk about what you're going to do that day. I mean to share what's going on in your life. And that's a hard thing for us to sometimes do. Especially sometimes for us men. It's a real struggle to share what's really going on inside of our life. But when we share what's going on in our life, there's a sense of intimacy that comes with sharing your heart with someone else. There's a sense of connection. And so when we talk to God, when we're praying to Him, we need to be honest and share what's on our heart. We need to share our joys, the things that we excite us and are, we're happy about. We need to also share our sorrows. We need to share our victories. And we need to share our defeats. We need to share our gratitude to God. And as we learned last week in that psalm we read last week, to share our disappointment. God. And we need to ask what we, for what we need. You know, some people think asking for themselves is selfish. And it can be at times. I'm not going to say that it's not. But if it's something that you need, it's what God wants to need it. You know, if your kids are, do you think your kids are selfish when they come and ask you for something? Perhaps, if it's something way out there, but if it's something that they really need, are you going to turn them away? Or are you going to give it to them? You see, we are children of the King. We are children of the King. In Matthew 7, 11, it says this, If you then know you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask Him? We need to share our need with God. Tell Him the things that we desire. And express that to Him. As Christ's disciples, we are to do what He did. And one of the things that He did was to help the hurt. We see that over and over again. Jesus helping those who are hurting. Physical hurt. Mental hurt. Spiritual hurt. But if we are to do so, it starts with loving Him. It starts with our loving Christ. 
and our loving God. We are told to love one another as Christ has loved us, but we can't do that until we love God with all of our heart, with all of our mind, all of our soul, and all of our strength. There was a little girl who went to the doctor for a checkup. And as the doctor was examining her, the doctor asked her, as, as she looked into her ear, she said, am I going to find Big Bird in there? The little girl goes, no. And then the doctor looked down her throat, and as she was looking down her throat, she said to the little girl, she said, am I going to find the cookie monster in there? The little girl said, no. And then she pulled out her stethoscope and listened to her heart. She said to the little girl, am I going to find Elmo in there? And she said, no, Jesus is in my heart. Elmo's on my underwear. <laughs> but here's the thought question for you. Is Jesus in your heart? Or is he just a picture on the wall? If we want to help the hurting, it starts with us loving God. Because he's the one who then provides us with the resources through the Holy Spirit to be a real help. And to be able to endure for the long haul. You know, why can missionaries spend years in remote places sharing the gospel? Because they love Jesus. Why can people give up $100,000 jobs to help children not their own? Because they love Jesus. Why can people spend their life working with people who are homeless? Because they love Jesus. If we easily get tired of helping others, perhaps, perhaps. Perhaps we're just a claim simple. Just one, we're going to sing our song to me. And uh, I'm going to use the song, More Love to Me. You know, and the song talks about giving our more love to Christ. And I don't know where you are at in your relationship with Christ for sure. You know, hopefully you're growing and you're getting closer. But all of us have a way to go. All of us need to learn to love Him more. And to really, because I doubt if there's anybody here, myself included, who loves Him with all of their heart, with all of their soul, with all of their mind, and all of their strength. That's where we need to get to. <laughs> So we need to be reading his letters to us. We need to be remembering how he loved us. And we need to be talking to him. This morning, how's your relationship? Do you love Jesus? Do you love God? I want you to really think about that. And if you need help with that, you know, we'll be glad to talk to you. If you need to know more about that, we'll be glad to talk to you. If you're struggling with something right now, we want to come and pray with you. So if you need to come forward, come forward now as we sing the song or, or come up to us after the service is over. Give us a call this week. We want to help you to get to know Jesus more. And uh, I encourage you to be reading your Bibles. And let me make just a little commercial. One thing about getting to know God's Word is being together with other Christians better. You really gain a lot more from that. And I think it's important. So we have men's Bible study, we have women's Bible study, we have Sunday school. You need to be in God's Word. And sound off what you want to know with other people. Question one another. Find out what you're thinking is, is, is correct. And so we encourage you to be a part of that in some way. So I encourage you to get involved in, in some kind of study group. And, uh, and let Jesus really come into your heart. Let's stand and let's sing.